didn't get to any of this? Okay. Yeah. 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 All right, here we go. We're starting from scratch. Yep. So, right. So, how to evaluate a square root? You're going to write squaring. A number means to multiply a number by itself. Finding the square root is the opposite. Okay? Now, these signs, even I forget what they're called. Okay, it's not a division sign because it's a square, and I used to just call it the square root sign, but it's not as called the square root sign. It is called the radical. And what's inside is called the radicand. Now, I will be honest with you, I do not, oh, I will be, I will not expect you to have those terms memorized. Okay, you will make it in lines without having those terms memorized, but know that it is not division. It is not division. I'll probably remember so, 5 squared is 25. So, the square root of 25 is 5. five. A perfect square is like a checkerboard. And this one is 8 by eight, so you're writing this in your notes, which would be 64 squares. When evaluating a square root, you are looking for what number? times itself will equal the number under the radical sign. And remember, this is the radical sign. Mm -hmm. So it's like saying, what times itself gives me 16? So what times itself gives me 16? Four. Four. Because, and I want you to write this here. The square root of 16, and you're going to write it equals 4. When you're doing an answer to the square root, never put it on the top. Because then you're kind of treating it like division, division and it's not division. Can you write that? Yes, you're writing this right in here. And then underneath of that, we're going to say 4 times 4 equals 16. So that's why the square root of 16 is 4. Uh, I'm going to add one little bit more here. And this is something that you're going to learn in the seventh grade is that it's not just 4. So now we're going to go on top of it, find some space up here. Because if I have a negative 4 times a negative 4, a negative times a negative becomes a positive. So 4 times 4 is 16. So the square root of 16 can really be 4 or negative 4. Okay? So that's something a little bit new. So how do I identify perfect squares? Because today we're just focusing on perfect squares. So a perfect square is a number whose square root is a whole number. Whole numbers are like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, or negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. Okay, that is a whole number. So I'm going to tell you when we fill out these answers, you're going to want to use these on our lesson. The square root of 1. So what times itself gives me 1? One? 1. 1. The square root of 4. Because two. 2 times 2 is 4. The square root of 9. 3. 3. Because 3 times 3 is 9. 
the square root of 16? Eight. Four. Four. Because four times four is? Sixteen. Sixteen. The square root of 25? Five. Five. Ah, so if you get to a lazy bone, you say, oh, this is just going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 16, okay? But, yes, it is going to go in that order. But as you write down the answer, I want you to say to yourself, 6 times 6 is 36. 7 times 7 is 49. Don't just write down all the numbers. 8 times 8 is 64. Oh, so it's always going to be times itself? It's always times itself, exactly. Okay. So go ahead and finish. 9 times 9 is 81. 81. 10 times 10 is 100. I want you guys to do the right side with me because these are ones that you won't have memorized. But they are ones that you're going to need. So this would be 11 times 11 is a? 121. Okay, 12 times 12 is? 13 times 13 is 14 times 14 15 times 15 16 times 16 17 times 17 No, we're on you're off. 17 times 17 is 289. 18 times 18 is 24. Uh, 19 times 19, and this is 20 times 20. 400. Excellent. Now, as I put in these notes over here, it could also be the negative. So the square root of 1 could be 1 or negative 1. Write that in there. This is an or. This is uh, oops. 2 or Negative two. Three or? Negative three. You don't have to keep doing that for all of them. Oh. Just do it on some of them so you know that that is the case. So we have some practice here with our perfect squares. The square root of 25 is? Five. five. That you should have memorized. I'm not putting it above the radical sign. I'm putting it below the answer. Now here, to evaluate this problem. You do the square roots first and then you subtract those answers. So what's the square root of 144? 12. Okay, if you don't have it memorized, look up here. 12. Three. Minus the square root of 16. Four. Four. Then you do 12 minus 4, which is 8. eight. You turn your paper over. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Why? Why? We don't have an 81 though. Alright, looking at. Alright, as Kayla. Hey, we all forget every once in a while. That's why we have that. That's something you're going to have to. You need to get that list of 1 through 10 perfect squares memorized. Those are just. Uh, uh, multiplication facts. So what's the square root of 81? Nine. Put it below it. Square root of 169? Square root of 40? Now you're getting up to some other problems. Listen carefully how you do these. Because the problem is underneath the radical sign, you do what's inside of it first. So I need to do what's 8 plus 1? Oh, 9. nine. nine. Then rewrite it that it's the square root. Make that square root sign, you go over a little bit, make a kind of a big V. So what's the square root of nine? Eight. It's not eight. Three. 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 What times itself gives me nine? Three. 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 Or so I can put the three underneath of it, or I can say equals three. Either way, you just do not put it on top. So for number five, we do what's inside the radical sign first. I don't know 100 minus 19. Some of you guys do. If I didn't know it, you do it off to the side. But as you guys are right, it is 81. So I find the square root of 81. So what times itself gives me 81? 9. 
So I'm going to say the square root of 81 is 9. What is this? Where 6 is different, it's adding, but you do what you do the square root first. So the square root of 9 is 3 plus the square root of 7. So 3 plus 7 is 10. Oh, yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, how many times have I made mistakes? Mm -hmm. Right? Every day. I thought it was 12. Every day. <laughs> Square root of 196 oh. is what? Do you forget? 14. 14. Over the square root of 49. 7. 7. What does this mean right here? It's a, it's a division problem. You divide. So 14 divided by 7 is 7. It's 2. two. Because 2 times 7 is 14. <laughs> Uh, that's 49. Okay, no comments. Just want you to take a look at the other side. I don't want to hear anything. Look at the other side and compare it to the side we just did. It's the same, so we don't have any more to do. Hey, zeros. There is time left in class. So what you're going to do is you're going to get out your IXL packet and you're going to log in IXL. Login is first name, last name, no dot. First initial, last initial. And you're gonna work for the last 10 minutes in class. So you're gonna work for about 10 minutes on IXL.